This is the story about the Morency Copper Mine. This old mine and town are located about 150 miles northeast of Tucson, Arizona, not far from the New Mexico border. I'll also mention that a lot of the photos in this video that are from the archives were taken in the 1940s. Copper at Morency was first noticed in the 1860s when army scouts and early prospectors reported rich ore in the rugged mountains of southeastern Arizona. In 1869, Henry Clifton, for whom the nearby town of Clifton was named, confirmed copper outcrops, and in 1870-72, Robert Metcalf and his partners staked the Longfellow and Metcalf claims. These discoveries would give rise to one of the most important copper districts in the United States. The Detroit Copper Mining Company of Arizona was incorporated in 1872, laying the groundwork for organized mining. By 1881, underground shafts were driving deep into the ore body. Morency, originally called Joy Camp, developed around the mine, while Clifton became the supply town along the San Francisco River. Another camp, called Metcalf, sprang up in the canyon above. These three settlements anchored the district's population for decades. The first great leap came when Phelps Dodge purchased a stake in Detroit Copper in 1881, gaining control by 1897. By 1917, Phelps Dodge had consolidated area properties, and in 1921, it absorbed the rival Arizona Copper Company, making Morency its flagship operation. In 2007, Freeport Mac Moran acquired Phelps Dodge, and today Freeport operates Morency with Sumitomo as a minority partner. Production was staggering. Morency shifted from underground mining to open pit methods in 1937, swallowing up the old towns of Morency and Metcalf as the pit widened. By the 21st century, Morency ranked as the largest copper producer in North America, turning out hundreds of millions of pounds of copper annually. At its height around 2010, more than 3,000 people worked at the mine. Alongside copper, the deposit yielded gold, silver, molybdenum, turquoise, and other minerals. In 1987, Morency became one of the first U.S. mines to install a solution extraction electro-winning plant, pioneering modern hydrometallurgy. But life in the camps wasn't just about ore and wages. It was always vulnerable to disaster. In 1897, a major fire swept through old Morency, consuming gambling halls, saloons, and many wooden buildings. In its wake, the town was partially rebuilt, and many residents relocated towards safer ground as the mining footprint expanded. Meanwhile, on Christmas night of 1897, the Clifton Concentrator was gutted by fire. Though rebuilt, the blaze disrupted ore processing for weeks. Later, on April 7, 1913, fires in Clifton's Chase Creek District destroyed about 25 structures and claimed five lives, prompting a shift toward brick and stone construction. In the 1890s, the mining camps were wild, volatile places where laborers, immigrants, lawmen, and outlaws collided. One of the most notorious figures to pass through was Augustine Chacon, a Mexican outlaw nicknamed El Peludo. In December 1895, Chacon and two associates staged a robbery in Morency that erupted into a bloody gunfight. Deputy Pablo Salcido was killed and Chacon was badly wounded before being captured. Though sentenced to hang, he escaped from prison in 1897, only to be recaptured years later by the Arizona Rangers. He was executed in 1902, but the gunfight at Morency secured his place in local legend. His presence highlighted the lawless edge of frontier mining towns, where fortunes in ore attracted not only miners, but also desperados. Labor unrest was another constant. Miners staged strikes in 1903 and 1915 16, fighting for better wages and conditions. The most infamous came in 1983, when Phelps Dodge refused to settle with unions. The confrontation brought in the National Guard and marked a turning point in U.S. labor history. Accidents also scarred Morency's record, 
fatal falls, truck mishaps, and explosions claimed lives over the decades, leading to tighter safety standards. Despite these hardships, the mine endured, fueling Arizona's economy and shaping the culture of Greenlee County. Clifton, with its stone buildings and riverside setting, survived as a historic town, while New Morency was rebuilt in phases as the pit advanced. Railroads once linked the mine to distant smelters, and today giant haul trucks and in-pit crushers symbolize its scale. Over its long history, the Morency mine has yielded an astonishing 44 billion pounds of copper, around 20 million metric tons. That staggering output ranks Morency among the largest copper producers on the planet, a true giant of the industry. You can still go to the town of Clifton and Morency today. As you travel US 191 through Morency, you will observe some of the mine facilities and tailings right along the highway as you enter Morency Canyon. As you climb up through the mine, you will be near the original Morency town site. Unfortunately, I read that Freeport no longer offers mine tours. Well, folks, that about wraps up this week's video. If you like stories about Arizona copper mines, you just might be interested in the new Cornelia mine over in Ajo, Arizona. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video.